Hello, Blaine Gray of Plaster and Beginners, and today we're going to show you how to plaster this block wall from scratch. I'm going to show you an easy way to get this plastered and flat using one simple technique. We're going to take the old screed method, to waste out bars that are level and plumb on the wall, and then we're going to use that as rules. I'm going to put a little twist on it. So, when you are plastering solid, you want to be using British gypsum hard wall or sand cement render or any render in that type. Now, the reason I'm going to go for British gypsum hard wall is because it sets faster and you can get two coats in one day, one right after the each other. So now in terms of thicknesses, we're looking for an overall thickness of around 12.5 mil. That is how thick our plaster needs to be and that is the thickness overall. Now the problem with this wall is we've got quite a lot of humps, it's definitely not flat and it's definitely not straight. It's going to make our life a lot more exciting. <laughs> In terms of preparation, we don't want any PVA on the walls. We're just going to soak the walls with water. That is it. We don't want PVA and we don't want any bonding agent. That's because hard wall, which is a plaster again we're going to be using, acts from the suction of the blocks. It relies on the block sucking the moisture out of the hard wall, out of the product, and that's what gives it its strength. So no PVA, no primers. We're just going to soak the wall down. But first, I'm going to show you how to set these. I mixed up some drywall adhesive, which is basically plasterboard adhesive. I mixed some up. We mixed it quite thick. You don't want it. You don't want it wet. You want it quite thick. You don't want it slurry. Because what we're going to do, we're going to fix this to the wall. We're going to get it plumb, but we need it to dry. So we want it quite thick, and we need it to be compact. So we're going to run it all the way up. So I'm going to show you that now. Cut a strip of plasterboard. And what I'm going to do is run a thin line a plasterboard adhesive right in the back of it. Now, as you've seen with that wall, it's all over the place. So, I've had a quick look. There's a lot more on the top needed than at the bottom. Now, we want a solid trail all the way through. We want it to be compact, and we need to make sure that it's got enough, so when we're ruling off it, it's going to be rigid, and it's not going to move. So, I'm going to run a line all the way through there. So we've got the strip, as you can see, we've got a solid line running all the way through. Now we're going to place that against the wall, push it in. So we're tampering it in, we've got the level on. We're just going to pack the edges now to make sure that it's all fully packed. The top needs to come out. So that needs to come out to meet the level, we haven't got enough in. If we haven't got enough, just pack the plasterboard adhesive behind and bring it out so we have got it. So we're going to tamper it in. We want it to be quite tight against the wall. This is 9.5 millimeter plasterboard, so we want to be aiming for that 12 mil thickness of the render. So push it in, and it's going to do two things. It's going to push it straight into the wall, and it's going to give it a bigger hold, which means when we are ruling off it, it's not going to move. Okay, so the screeds are set up. Let's have a look. Got one there, one there, and one there. So we've got three, but there's one thing we need to look out for. Every part is touching. So end to end, we need to not only make sure the screeds are plumb, we need to also make sure the screeds line up, they all run across level as well, and then they're all plumb. So these are all plumb, they're plumbed off, and they've leveled to each other. The last thing, just want to make sure they're all packed out. The edges are fully packed out, and there's no gaps. Obviously there, I probably do a bit of excess, but. So now you're ready. That is a hard bit. So I'm gonna soak the wall with some water. Dirty water, don't worry about it. Just give the walls a good soaking. That is the only preparation we're going to do before hard walling. Now the rest should be easy. Okay, so the walls are wetted in. They're all ready to go. Got a nice application of water. Now, the one thing to consider with these blocks, they're very porous. These are going to suck the hard wall out like anything. And actually, you've got to be careful with certain type of blocks. If it's the really smooth, low density blocks, apparently you can't use this product. So we're going to mix this up now. You want to be using fresh water in the bucket first, and then we're going to mix it up till it's nice, thick consistency. So I'm going to get that up and going, and then we're going to start throwing it on. Right, so 
so it's all mixed up. Now what you want is when you are putting down the hog, it sits on top of itself. So you can see, you can really mound it up and it doesn't collapse under its own weight. This is quite thick, but it's actually a really fluffy product. But when you do throw it on, can you see how it just sits on its own? Kind of has a little mound, it doesn't sag. It's not like Thistle Multi Finish, which is everywhere. This kind of holds its own weight. Now this is the ideal consistency you're looking for. It was roughly about 14 to 15 litres of water actually. Because you get a lot more in the uh, Thistle bags than you do in the Multi Finish bag. Now let's start firing it on a wall. It's the opposite end when you're doing um, solid plastering. Same with rendering, you start right to left. When you're applying the render, you work it into itself. So let's just quickly go into it now. You apply this in two coats. So you do one pass, which is below the 12 millimeter mark. So what we're gonna do is gonna have it lower than our screeds. And then you go over it again, and that's when you get your overall thickness. So let me show you. Start on the top. So obviously you've got that area where it really bellies in. I'm going to try and build that out so it's kind of on par with the rest of the wall. So like I say, we're just doing the first coat which is quite thin. So we don't really want to be worried about getting it flat. At this point, because we've got the screeds in place, you just want to fire it on. Seriously, that's all you need to be doing. Okay, so I've just mixed up some more hard wall and we've got the first coat on. Now again, make sure it's behind the screeds. But now, at this point, the screeds should be solid. So the good thing is now we've put the base coat on, the initial coat, the hard wall that is, we'll be able to rule off them. So now all we do, just gonna apply the top section. So again, stand at the right side. Now there's no waiting times with this product. Once you've got this two sections covered, or say if you've got a wall, got an initial coat on, you can go straight on top of it. You don't have to worry about drying times or whether you're able to go on it. You can just literally fire it back on. And Hardwell is an amazing product. It's lovely to use, it's nice to travel, and it's lovely to float. It's actually, you've got a long time to work with it. Unlike British Chips and Bonding, which by the way, you should never use for brick block work, never. Just use this stuff. You have a lot more time to use it. It's a really nice product. So. Beautiful thing with this as well, you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry whether it's flat or anything really. We're just getting it on. So that panel's been applied. We've got the uh, plaster on, the base coat's done. So now we've just got to rule it off. I've got two options. This is a derby. These have got handles on the frame make it very easy to work with. But I also like using, this is another straight edge. I've had this for years. This is a feather edge. And you hold it at the bottom edge. You've got a little bevel at the side there. It's a bit of a dip. So you can use it to rule it, turn it around, and then you've got your flat edge. So it doesn't matter what you use, to be honest. Just use what you're comfortable with. Mix it up, use different options so you get used to it. But the main thing is you're just used to the tool. Now I've done screeds at 1.2 meters for argument's sake. So I'm just gonna use this. So we just go to the screed. Then what you'll do, end to end, collect the, the plaster. What's gonna happen, we're gonna start seeing a low spot. So let's do it again, going end to end, and we're just ruling off. Now when you are ruling, you wanna hold the, the derby for the finishing point at 90 degrees. That's gonna get your flattest point, so. 90 degrees. So now, we can see where all the low spots are. So these sections here, where it hasn't been ruled, we've got to fill them in, then we rule it back again. But as you can see, we're running in line with the, with the screeds, but these are just the low spots. So all we do is take a bit of render and add it in. Take some plaster, 
fill in the low spots. Now again, take the derby. That section of wall is flat, it's plumb because we've used it from screed to screed. And all of a sudden you've fully plastered brick block wall. And it, to be honest, it's relatively easy with these screed bars. That is how easy it is if you just set up these props, which make your life abundantly easier. And that is it. That's literally that section of wall, flat, plumb. Now I'm going to get the other side on. There is one more thing we've got to do, so it's not fully over yet. Now the only problem with this system is the fact that we have now got plasterboard in the middle. So the great thing about this system also is the fact that because we use board adhesive, it's still probably wet compared to the hard wall. So you've got two options here. You can pull the uh, board off, fill in the gaps, and then you've got a full wall that is just hard wall. Now, that's okay to do, but there's a lot of messing around. When this sets, it will be completely solid. Right, the great thing about board adhesive and board is the fact that when it sets, if there's something behind it, it is solid. So you have got the option to leave it in. Just remember, you'll have to scrim tape the edges. So there's still a tiny bit of work. The other thing to remember is this is going to set at a slightly different time to the hard wall. So really, the best thing to do is rip them out. I know it's hard work to think about, but once you've got them in, you can rip them back and fill it. Now, it doesn't have to be plasterboard. It could be anything. It can be doorstop. You can even get the ones you bed into the wall and you leave in. That's your options. Now, what we've got to do is wait for it to dry a little bit. Okay, so it's been about 45 minutes, roughly, give or take. And the render, the plaster, has firmed up. So when you put your fingers in, it's soft to the touch, but it's not moving. It feels compact. It's taken up and it's skinned up. So basically, you're at a point now where you can push your fingers into it, and it'll leave a tiny indentation, but it's got some force behind it. If we rely on 45 minutes, it should be right. This is a devil's float. It's a float which you use in plastering, rendering, and it's got screws in the top. You see? And this is what we're gonna use now to provide a mechanical key. A mechanical key is basically Anywhere we strike some lines into the plaster which allows the top coat, the finished coat of plaster, to sit on top and it binds to the base coat. So basically all you do is put the float flat to the wall and then we just do figure of eight motions. The reason we do it with a devil's float rather than a scarify like a scratcher is because we're filling in any low spots and taking any high spots off the wall. So again, float close to the wall. And you would have seen this on old walls, like old walls where you crumb back the plaster and you've got this key. This is basically any key you provide so the top coat can sit on. And you just do it all the way around. And there it is. That's your wall. It's been floated. It's been flattened. We've also applied a mechanical key, which means it's now ready for the top coat, the finished coat of plaster. So that's it, your wall's floated, it's scratched, you've got the devil's float, you've got a key ready for the top coat of plaster. Now usually what you do, you'd wait two to three hours, again depending on temperature, you'd wait for that to fully dry, then you put your finished plaster directly on top of that. Now to see that process, click that video here, I'll show you the full way to plaster a brick wall where I didn't even use screeds, all freehand, but I'll also show you how to put the finished plaster on top. And subscribe here, thanks a lot.